Well, hello, I hope you're doing well. And I'm not sure where you are. I'm standing outside and it is absolutely raining out here. Matter of fact, I might take the odd hit to the shoulder of a raindrop. I know that our God has supplied all our needs according to his riches in glory. And that's a statement that Peter says. Uh, and I wanna just talk about stepping on to what the Lord has for you today. If I take a couple steps back out uh, where I am right now, I would get really, really wet. Uh, there are times where you just have to kind of make a step. Sometimes uh, an inch or two is all you need to, to do. Controlling every inch is not necessarily, like sometimes people are like looking for this huge thing. They're like, you know, I want to part the Red Sea. When you look at the walk of faith in Hebrews 11, most of the things that are a big deal were done by the corporate body of Israel, the whole church, so to speak. Most of the things that are the personal works on the list of Hebrews 11, of the things that people did by faith, they're actually pretty humble. So we often like say, you gotta do the huge things. God's often gonna mark down what you did on the small things. The list of Hebrews 11 is the best example of that. They being the people of Israel did the big things. And often it's us as a people, a whole church that do the big things together uh, in terms of seeing the Red Sea part, whole church. Walls of Jericho coming down, whole church. But Joseph, who ran Egypt by faith, essentially, all it talks about is he talked about taking his bones out of there. So it's something I wanna look at. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. It says that by faith, Enoch in the Old Testament was translated. Now, I love this word. It's to carry over from one thing to another, to carry it across. When the people of Israel, the whole group of them, were carried across by God from the one side of the Red Sea to the other. So Enoch was translated. Individually, his life was totally carried across. What was carried across with Enoch? He was here, then he was not. He was totally there. Interesting, by both uh, Enoch and Elijah went entire. That's exactly what the Bible says. Spirit, soul, and body. There's 16 individual examples of faith in Hebrews 11. Enoch is one of them, and his faith was manifested by walking with God. So I had mentioned this a few weeks ago. Don't get stereotyped in how, into how faith should be expressed. Those 16 examples are put there for you and for me as an example and for a reason. Faith, it says, in this chapter must also be accompanied by appropriate action. But note the various kinds of actions prompted by faith. James 2 says, faith must be accompanied by appropriate works. What are the works? Enoch walked with God. Rahab risked her life for the spies for the walls of Jericho to come down. That's the work. And to call or to, uh, when we talk about in the Bible, a lot of people think I'm called that that would mean you're called to go into the ministry, but it's not. All of us are called. To call in the Bible is to invite, to ask to something. That's kind of what it means. It means, and it goes together with to summon, or a summons is a call from authority. So oftentimes an invitation or a call is a mix, uh, and it goes together with a summons. So to invite or to summon, and they go together actually in the Bible. It's a call from authority. And it's interesting, a call or a, or a summons, it's an invitation to all the blessings that are true and that are promised in the Lord Jesus. All of us are called, all of us are called to all the blessings that are in Christ Jesus. Is that what you think when you think of a call? Probably not. We think we've made our mind up. Uh, God calls some people, but that's not gonna work for me. If you're called by God, which all of us are, it means you have an invitation to all the blessings that are in Jesus. That's pretty amazing. Anytime you read Hebrews 11, you will see these people who respond to the call. And each call is very different from one to another. Colossians 1.13 says, He who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his Son, uh, if we've believed in him, that transfer in one kingdom to another kingdom. And as you respond by faith, faith works to transfer you 
from one kingdom to another. And it's really important to know some of this stuff. Why? Because there's an authority that you access through faith into the things that God has for you. Um, 2 Peter 1.10 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. So all of us are called. It's not just one individual. It doesn't reach a few people that are going to become full-time pastors. We all, it's not have a part to play. You're all, we're all called by God. God calls you. It's like if you ever feel him tugging on your heart, that's a call from the Lord. In many ways, that's a rhema word as well. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing comes from the word of Christ. It's not the word of God. It's the word of Christ. And the word there isn't logos, which is the general word of God. It's rhema, which is a specific word. It's a got you word. So how do you express a rhema word? There's times where a Bible verse jumps off. It's like a got you moment from God. That's a rhema word. Sometimes it's you're reading your Bible. Sometimes it's the Lord tugging on your heart. But when you call or respond to the pull or the call, faith then is created. Faith comes by listening, listening from to the word of God. But it's a rhema word. So it invokes this thought of you're hearing, you're listening. So the key to a call is whatever God calls you to, you have to listen to that. And this is where it gets interesting. Hebrews 11, and to sort this out, if you look at the 16 individual examples, the works that they carried out, most Christians today would say wouldn't even count as a work of faith. People are literally laying their hands on their kids and praying. They're laying their hands on their grandkids and praying. They're doing the things that God told them to do. Joseph, it says in the one example, says, get my bones out of Egypt when you leave and go to the promised land. We would say that that's too humble of a thing, or maybe that wouldn't count. It's not big enough. Don't listen to what people say. Listen to what God calls you to. And if God quotes something to you, what I mean by that is there's times where it's very specific. As a matter of fact, every example in the Bible is specific in Hebrews 11. You don't want to take somebody else's call. You want to listen for your own. There were two people, Enoch and Elijah, who were carried across they were no more because God came and got them. Meaning their bodies went to heaven. Uh, not they, when they, they didn't necessarily die, they were just totally carried across. What's interesting though is they, this happened by faith is what it says in this list. Like what a strange thing. I'm no more because it's not that I just had faith. The outworking of the work was that they were translated to heaven. So God came and got them. It's not like, you don't forget about that thought. It's like, the guy was here, and then he's gone, and his body doesn't remain because God took him. There was another guy named Philip in the Bible. He was in this great, he was called an evangelist. The only evangelist speaks of in the Bible. By name is Philip, the evangelist. He was in a great big revival, and then he felt the Lord tell him, go in the middle of the desert. He's out in the middle of the desert. A guy's driving his chariot, which is like driving a sports car down the road, and he goes and he's sitting there. God sends him in the middle of nowhere. And then it says that he heard this guy reading this portion of scripture about, it's a messianic scripture about Jesus. And he said, do you understand this? No, I got nobody to explain it to me. Philip then baptizes this Ethiopian guy. That's who started the Ethiopian church. Uh, it traces its roots back to that man in the book of Acts. Now, what's interesting is that it says, then it says, then God, then he just kind of vanished, Philip, and then he was transported somewhere else. So there are works of faith that go beyond our ability to really comprehend what God is calling you to. Enoch walked with God, and the work was he was taken to heaven because he didn't die. Same with Elijah. He just took off, so to speak, but his body went with him. God wants to translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And whatever faith he is calling you to do, whatever he's saying for you to do, he's calling you to get saved, number one. But he's also, he's not putting on your back something that you can't do. If he's calling you to something, look at the list, go take your Bible and read that list. Faith must be accompanied by appropriate works. What are the works? Often it's on the works that people get condemned. Many times we would look at it and say, what is it God wants me to do? 
There's times in church where all God wants me to do is say something. That's the work. What I notice about works is it's always a risk. When you have something from God and you've heard for sure, you have to go out on the edge of the plank of the pirate ship often. But don't, it's not a performance. And when you do it, you don't owe anyone an explanation. You don't need people to see you. You, you don't know, if you don't know how to handle it, you just say, well, this is what I kind of feel the Lord put in my heart. Don't spiritualize things. If God puts it in your heart, you have to recognize that God is using you. And why, why is it important? And I mentioned this a few weeks ago. It's important to see this because the Holy Spirit, the witness of the Holy Spirit, you need to know that you are doing what God wants you to do. The enemy can trick you by getting you to think that what you're doing isn't what you're called to do. You can be doing the very thing God wants you to do and you don't know. And I'm going to tell you, many people are. The Lord put in my heart a few weeks, this weeks ago, it's in the garage. They just need to bring it into the church. Is God working in your life? Is it in the garage and you just need to bring it in your house? That means I'm doing works of faith I don't even know. I don't even recognize. God spoke into my heart to do this little thing. It maybe seems little, but who are we to judge what's little and big? You've heard? If you heard, faith is there. Where does faith of this nature come from? This kind of faith it doesn't quit. If you hear it, once you hear it, it's there. Hearing isn't listening. I know kids that listen, but they don't do what they're told. Hearing is just listening to the point that you then follow through with what you've heard. And it's, we make things so complicated, faith is not complicated. If you've heard, if you're listening, you just follow through on it. If I get something put in my heart and I get up on a Sunday morning and the Lord speaks, there's maybe somebody here. And I know there's someone in the building. I know there's someone listening to me. When I feel it in my heart, what makes a difference in somebody's life is not because I had a theory or I had a theological exposition. The Bible defines faith. Please hear me on this and no, don't fight with me because you're not going to win. Because this isn't for me, it's from the Lord. Faith is one of the few concepts, key concepts in the Bible that is uh, defined. It's not that we're deserving of faith. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the word of God and faith comes. It's not because we're questioning God saying, I don't believe it. Faith is when you believe it. So let's just put it down this way. And I feel this from the Lord. Faith isn't questioning God. Some people are like, I question the theory or I question the theology. It doesn't really matter. You're fighting on a, you're fighting on a level that it doesn't really even matter. You can have all the theology and know the word, but it's not listening in your heart. Faith is when you listen. Not listen to theology, listen to the voice of God. That is exactly what the Bible says. You have to take your time to let this register. So when you question theology, you question this, you question burdens, it doesn't really matter. If God is speaking to your heart and you're listening, faith comes out of that thing. None of us are deserving of any of it. Jesus paid the price for it all. So Enoch, who walked with God, his faith was manifested by walking with God. Don't get stereotyped in your life of how, when God speaks to your heart, if you listen, meaning you believe it, you follow through on it, you act on it, you pursue it, whatever it looks like, that's how the work happens. Joseph spoke about the, when Israel would leave Egypt. And what he said is, when you go, you got to take my bones with you. Faith for him. This is a man who was second command. He ruled the whole country. Doesn't say there that he ruled Egypt by faith, by faith which he did. God provided what as an example? He spoke about, get me out of here. Put me in this camp with the Israelites. Don't leave me in Egypt was very important to understand that the words he spoke by faith because it wasn't a couple years later it was probably like a long long along those lines when he spoke that by faith someone broke in and took his body his bones you know it's an interesting thing when he said get my bones out of here he knew by the time he was leaving all that was left was bones it wasn't a corpse it was bones so he knew something in his heart that it was a long time away there's things that god will speak to you 
you want to do the exact quote. One of the things about God is God, whatever he puts, don't you don't negotiate, you don't tweak it, you don't kind of like look at the terms and say, well, I'd like this added on. You do exactly what God spoke, uh, sp- spoke into your heart. And when he speaks something, you don't have to feel like you have to do the heavy list, lift, li- lifting. You have to do the heavy listening. There's very, it's a very different thing. You can often tell, and with this I close, with God, it's the listening, the heavy listening that's important. Listening is the key. Faith comes. You can't really do any of this without it. You, if you've heard, it's the listening. It's the heavy involvement here is listening. The faith part, the work part, it may be a lot of work. Moses built an ark. He listened, though. And when you listen, it's the faith. It's helping you to do the final task. Faith is a substance. So it's not, it's not, the Bible doesn't say it's a theology, a theory. It doesn't say it's like a doctrine at all. Good doctrine is good if it comes from the Bible. But the blessing of faith, it's a substance in your heart. And you have to listen to the word of Christ, the rhema word, whatever it is that's spoken. It, it, you know, it, it cuts between bone and marrow. It's, it doesn't limit you. It very really activates faith if it's a real word. And how does it activate it? It's an interesting thing. It's not how. Uh, it, how does it activate it? It's how does it happen? And how it happens is the second you listen, the second you've heard, it means you set in motion things in your life. I notice when I hear, I set things in motion. I give it my full ear. What does that look like for you? What does it look like for me? Kind of depends on what it is you hear. But I know what happens when I give my focus to something. You can almost tell with me when I'm really listening. And what drives faith is listening. Listening out of our heart, not out of our head. Faith lives in the heart. That's what the Bible says. It says, put on the helmet of hope. Uh, the hope of your salvation. Hope is in the mind. It's not doctrine faith. You can know everything up here. Hope is up here, not faith. Faith is in the heart. The breastplate of righteousness over your heart. And I want to shout it out from the rooftop. It's not a deal you strike. It's just listening. And whatever the details are, do exactly what he tells you. Like I snap my finger like that. The minute I believe you listen, listen, like actually listen then faith is there. Now, it may be imparted and it may not work out right away, but it will be in there and it will be a substance and it will be real. And it's something that you you want God to touch. Like, I want God to touch your heart uh, so that you can hear it, what God is saying to you. But I also want you to know the minute you listen, faith will be, will be there. It doesn't matter what everybody else believes. It matters, did you listen to the rhema word from Christ. This is the final thing I'm going to wrap up on. The key to faith is headship. Jesus is Lord, but in the Bible, it doesn't say he's just Lord. It also says he's the head. I notice that many people are fraught with a misunderstanding. They'll often look, you'll get something that someone might get faith in their heart, and then somebody comes along, gives them a word from God that replaces Jesus as the head. No one is the head of this church, of my church, No one is the head but Jesus. And the head is the one that speaks. Now, if a word is from God, great. But what you're listening to will define you. Don't give your heart to people. Give your heart to the head, which is Jesus. And in the head, only Jesus can help you sort things out. Doesn't matter if you've heard from a person. Even if they say they're hearing from God, doesn't matter. You you won't have faith. Jesus has got to speak it. And it has to come clean Uh, I I would just, you're not looking for like a charismatic fortune teller in your life. You don't need, like, I believe in prophecy. I believe all of it. But Jesus is the head. And that's, a word has to come from Christ. That's the only place. And that's how faith plays out. Faith plays out when a word is from Christ. And it's actively spoken by him. And if people picking words left, right, center, they can be making snowballs, throwing them at you all they want. It ain't from the Lord. And you can't figure anything out by doing that. You'll just, in your mind, be going crazy. 
when you hear in your heart from Jesus as the head, you have to make a determination. I want you as my head. You give the directions. You speak the things. Your choice, not mine. And it's no one else's choice. And I want to hear you clearly on this. And the second you listen at that point, ah, then faith, when you listen, it appears. And you'll have it. In Jesus' name, I pray it would work out for you, whatever Jesus says as your head. In Christ's name, amen.